Hello everyone, how you doing today? Got some more Creole stuff to show you and then I wanted to show some uh, tips on building Creole and texturing Creole. Um, and I think I've got it down better than I did in the past. Uh, been building a lot of Creole structures and sort of really get my uh, methods down in which it's becoming a lot quicker to build and skin these things. And it was like the uh, the airy, the first creel building I've made, took forever and a day to try to texture this thing. Um, and now I think I could probably texture the whole thing in a fraction of the time it originally took, just by following some different rules here. So what I've done in the last couple days again is I skinned this thing. Um, don't have a name for it yet, and doesn't have an interior yet. In fact. Uh, I think what I'm going to do later on in this video after I show you a couple more things is to mod this building because I need to extend the base out and get a entry entryway into the thing. So uh, there is that. Just taking a look at some other buildings. This one does not yet have an interior. Uh, I do plan on doing that pretty soon. Um, but the other POI this one has been uh, fully uh, decked out on the interior and handed off to another author now I'm not saying names of authors yet because I didn't get their permission but I don't I, um, I don't have any uh, problems with that but basically I made a deal with another author to rig uh, POIs that I'm that I'm building and so we can get like the uh, production line going faster to make more stuff quicker and that I've been really trying to do. Um, so let's start over here a minute. And I'm going to go to mood lighting as natural with all Creole stuff. And there I'll oh, didn't quite get quite moody enough there. So I like to look at these things at nighttime um, with the lights. But here we'll walk in this building. Now this building is not too big. Um, Obviously, from the outside, too, it didn't look too big. It's got a couple entryways. Uh, one will come through on this back uh, landing pad over here. Um, and these are pretty dinky landing pads, too. I mean, they're they're not very big, but they're, you know, whatever. It's, it's a POI. It's not a player base. Now, there are some nice things about building POIs versus player bases, and that is I don't have to care about cost or material usage either so and I can do extravagant things that I wouldn't normally do in a player base because they're expensive especially if I'm building like a starter base or something um, so going up to the second floor here this links to another landing pad um, out over here and uh, not a lot of room to be shooting up uh, bad guys in here there'll probably be some but um, I, I'm not sure exactly how many are going to fit in here and you got a uh, third floor here, which is really dinky, and it's just basically got a generator in it, and it might have some loot. Um, there's a couple spaces to put stuff. This this is a pretty cramped POI, though, for building stuff. And there's this weird little outcove over here, which might have a loot, loot chest or something, too. Who knows? Uh, in fact, I don't know because I'm not doing it. So, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll get to play it for the first time and see how they actually uh, play, which is pretty cool. And then you have the top floor over here, which has... Uh, the main base parts like fuel in O2 and a core position in back. So I didn't hide the core or anything. This base probably is not going to be terribly hard to take over. Most of the fight is going to be shooting the defenses on the exterior of the base or get creative in a way to get inside of here and disable the core without getting blown up by all the bazillions of turrets on the thing. So that is one thing. Um, okay, so that's my mood lighting part. So I'm going to get back into daytime here a minute. Um, show you another structure or two uh, that are being worked on. Now here, I started a larger POI, and this one's going to have considerably more room in it. Um, and it's very funky designed again, and I'm kind of working out some details here. Right now, my big debate is on this thing. Do I want a floor below this or do I want to keep this open ground as it is it's got these big stairways getting up on the this front balcony over here and it's got some kind of weird ooze pit thing with a thing going down to the ooze pit 
don't know what it is, but it's hey. <laughs> You know, um, as in the structure itself, it's pretty big. It's uh, probably every bit as big as the Cruel Airy, um, but it doesn't have a giant hanger in it uh, sucking up the space. Now, when, the, when I started this out, the floor was at this height level here. That's why all this only goes to that point right now. But then when I got into building this area out, I decided to add this thing and uh, make it two blocks taller. So right now I'm I'm kind of redesigning the base of it and I got to get like a ground or, I got to figure that out yet. Um, you can kind of see what this thing looks like. Uh, very strange design, again, um, gonna be a larger base. It's not a drone base, so I do want to build a drone base at some point in time, but I need to look up some more technical specs on that before I even begin because there's certain Certain things you got to know to make the drone spawn right and all that other fun stuff. So I do want to get into that. Um, so this will be uh, another new POI once this one's done. This is going to be a little bit more of a time-consuming project, a larger building on the inside. This one shouldn't take too terribly long to do up the inside on either because it's not terribly big. Um, and the other one, this this one is not terribly big. It is... There, it is bigger than the first one, though. Um, so you'll see a couple, two, three floors inside of this POI with some larger open rooms and things like that. So it'll it'll be a little bit better. Um, now another author, and again, I don't want to say the name yet because I didn't get permission yet. Um, I asked, but uh, just just this morning and didn't get a reply. So another author was starting a uh, a creel structure over here. This looks like a big one. It's really cool geometry and, and things going on and some neat lighting and all kinds of stuff. Um, I like I like yeah all this all this little stuff. This is this is so creel, very cool. Got a lot of the textures right um, on the places that are textured. Now one thing I've discovered with with building creel buildings is. In the past, you know, when I, when I built this one, I was all complaining that I didn't want to build it out of concrete because I didn't like the textures and things like that. And I built it out of steel. Uh, and you can tell because you look at all these walls and they're really, they're really pretty flat. And then if you take a look at, like, the original Ari, it looks different. Um, and all these new ones as well, I don't use the, uh, that flat texture really. On these new ones anymore um, it's all been switched to using mostly concrete textures and I'll replace a few blocks for other textures along the way I found that to be my, my best method now of doing the creel up um, oh before I uh, forget to I've got this uh, this little guy done now um, and let's see this is the creel in Sulla uh, it, uh, I managed, I, I, on the last video, I was like struggling with CPU and trying to figure out, how am I going to make this work? Can I get a constructor in it? Um, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I was overlooking one aspect. Uh, what I did to free up all the CPU I needed to add a constructor in the, the base function I wanted in it is I removed one turret. I left the turret position there so you can add one back. Still has four turrets, uh, 360 degree viewing. In fact, any direction you come at this, you should be able to have three turrets firing on you um, from any any side. Um, so in some cases, like if you come up from this angle, you could actually get four turrets firing on you. Um, but on the inside, uh, about the same. It does come with a constructor now. So it's got it's just a large constructor, and this has to do with resource cost. I didn't want this to require any rare resources. I wanted to have a very low build time, up and running quick. Um, so all the same uh, stuff in here. I did make a change. I put in quick access to O2 and fuel right as you walk in the door, um, kind of built into the walls. I added a uh, tier two CPU block that you can add here. Then you got another spot for a constructor. Uh, med bay, um, upstairs you got some extra room on the walls over here to add in 
more parts or things or storage boxes or whatever. Basically, it comes with six uh, large storage boxes, nine grow plots, food processor, oxygen, um, all that fun stuff. But in the end, um, you got a 32 minute, three second build time. Um, requires no cobalt or neodymium, neodymium or anything really. Um, the biggest thing is it requires nine concrete grow blocks, grow plots. Um, mostly stone, a little bit of iron, some carbon substrate. So uh, this one I plan on releasing probably this weekend. So it is done, it's ready. I don't think I can do any more tweaks to this thing, um, really. It's, uh, it's, it is what it is. And for a mod or two, uh, like I mentioned before too, the floor are pretty much blocks that you could replace with uh, cargo extensions and then add a controller somewhere. I didn't want to do that on this build because it'll increase the, uh, the cost of it. <clears throat> and this is supposed to be kind of more of a micro starter base, about as micro as I get, I guess. <laughs> um, and uh, so that's the deal on that one. So moving on. Next thing I wanted to do, and I'll do this in the video here, is I want to take one of these, um, and I like the tower, and it's got enough room to get like an elevator system and a bigger room up top, but the problem right now is it has no entry point, and the space is kind of small, um, and I kind of wanted to build it out bigger. So, to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to first grab this thing and spawn it up in the air find it here and I think this is yeah number four unnamed one yet so I'm gonna raise it a little bit up in the air so I can get access to the bottom of it right now um, and then turn on some symmetry and from there I go back to concrete and what I wanted to do is basically add another block row to the bottom and then get a doorway mounted somewhere in here and probably just one doorway on this one uh, some of these have multiple ways to get in and out um, this one's probably not going to have that so what I want to do is make like a little lip and then bevel out the rest of it um, so I got to take a look at my angles up top here. So right here we got a 45 degree angle. So I got to know what blocks work on that and how big do I want this lip. Um, so I think I'm going to go with this, this set over here of the original 22.5 wedges. And then I'm going to rotate those so they're facing downward like that. And then I'll kind of build up something like that. And then we got to, I want to this to follow this on through. So let's see, let's do like that. Over here, we got to change the angle to match the 22.5 on that side. So I'll go with one of these alternative 22.5 blocks on filling this in and building it up as we go here let's see how far do I want that to go okay that should keep on going at this angle another row up to about here I think and then I'll want to switch again Okay, so then here we want to uh, make this wider somehow. Maybe I should have started that here. Yeah, let's do that. So then we're going to switch the angle to a 45 angled, kind of like this here, maybe. Lost the lip here though, but that's all right. And then let's see on the side here. Um, I'm 
want that to stick out that far. Yeah. Why not? Just put in a regular wedge here. And then it needs to start wrapping back in on the other direction. Extend over the edge again. So let's grab something from this set. Oh no, these are. This is 22.5 here. Okay, wrong part. We need to get into these. Rotate that around so it kind of lines up. But yeah, I want to want to one past the edge here. Probably have to modify that block there too, okay. Get it all lined up nice. It's uh, going a little bit further out here. I think I might have to deal with that. I don't think there's a blocked solution there. So, we made it to this point. Now, I don't know. No, we're going to start turning it right here. So we're going to switch back over to here. Whoops. Uh, there we go. Okay, so then we'll turn that like that. And one of these, another one of those. And then probably transition back to the other curve again, or other angle. Like that. And we'll put this Oops. solid block. And I'll just leave that how it is for now. Okay, so where the core is now, I'm thinking, will be a doorway. And we can put like a staircase over here. Let's pop one in. Let's make a mod modification to these blocks now to give the staircase some trim. Build it up so there's like some block guardrails, I guess you could say. Let's get a little curvy action going on here on the front. Rather than putting in the regular one, I'll put one of those. Okay, so now we've got an entry point. We've got this built up. Yeah, pretty much the whole thing already. All right. So I think that seems mostly fitting. Okay, so the next part is I'm going to just show you a little bit on what I've been doing to texture Creel. Um, and honestly, I've been really liking the concrete more or less better, believe it or not, than the steel box for these uh, creations. Um, and it has to do with this texture that I'm using that's only concrete specific. I actually have a few of them now. There's this one, this one, and in some cases, well, this one. And where do I have it? Oh, maybe I don't have much on this one. And there's also that uh, ceramic tiling texture that I've been using. Weird way. So yeah, this this one over here. I don't seem to have colored right right now. Or maybe I do. But anyway, so what I've been doing a lot of times is doing like layers. Uh, so one row might have this particular like... Uh, floor texture and then I'll have a layer of this now some of the stuff trying to align it in certain areas is nearly impossible I can do a little better job than what's here right now, but so much of it is just not going to align 
So on this base row here, um, if I follow the scheme of every other row is a different color and different texture mostly. I gotta fix that up. I'm gonna do this one similar to that. Um, so this color, I typically always color um, certain textures that I'm using. So this, this color here will color pipes, uh, usually the floor tiling, vents, and uh, I think that's just about it. <laughs> so, but I'm going to put in some more of this here. So let's get some of this going for now. And then we'll try to make it prettier by doing certain things with it. I've been uh, actually fully utilizing this, uh, the new combo tool for the first time too, and I didn't like it. But now that I kind of know what I'm coloring things before I get to it, um, I uh, found that it's actually kind of, uh, it, it saves a lot of time. Can you imagine that? It does two things at once and it saves time. How can that be? <laughs> uh, all right, well, anyway. So, um, okay, so we got the base with that now on this row here. I don't really know what I want to do with it. I don't really want it that texture. I don't want it this texture. And there's not a lot of choices. But I'm going to try something a little different. Now, another texture I've been using here and there, not a lot, but once in a while, is this, uh, this texture here. Natively, it's really dark. So what I've been doing is actually texturing that with this gray, which makes it blend better with the rest of this so we'll uh, texture this strip here with that um, I guess for now we'll just hit this area too even though I might change that let me get the insides of this in and then let me uh, texture that let's just texture a couple more parts here a minute you know that's going to get removed and then for stairways I came up with a standard color set for stairways and what textures to use I've been trying to kind of do all the creations the same way so what I've been doing is I go you have your two different highlight colors or your uh, texture light colors uh, there's a darker one and a lighter one lighter one doesn't get used often that's only very specific cases most texture lights uh, would be used in this one so I'll do that, and then I'll select this particular texture, slap that over the staircase like that. I'll switch my color around to this, this black, and then I've been going to this texture, rotating it once, and that is basically the scheme for the staircases. Um, and it lights up at night, and I think it looks all right for the most part. So now without using all these weird angles and blocks there's obviously like every other one textures weirdly like it's at a 45 degree angle here and whatnot but every other one does actually line up so i could add in some alternative textures here and i'm gonna do that a minute so i'm gonna go back to this shade to match the same color row and i'm gonna just try to add in this, this texture over here on these solid areas, which can give me just a little bit of something. Oop, did the wrong one. Um, like that, you know, something to look at along the way. These corners over here, let's try this emblem thing. Now, I, I've been using this just a little bit, not much, but just once in a while. Um, to get in again something to look at let's do another one like that there and maybe another one of these emblems over here all right so and you know what I think I've got this row textured off to with these things I thought they were supposed to go that way maybe they are on the other side that happens to me a lot. No, I guess not. All right, so then we've got this last area to texture here. i go back in with some of this dark tiling stuff. Uh. 
Oh, yeah. Ah. Uh, okay. So that one can't be that way. Yes, can. Of course, that's all. It's still kind of plain, but in the end, you know, I might try to add some more stuff in there, maybe and pop in a couple more texture lights. But when you get uh, the general lighting and stuff, it, it all blends where none of these are, are really sticking out to you too much. It kind of all blends in like this general color theme, even though there's like three different colors involved in here. That seemed to be problematic there too, sorry. Um, and uh, it's kind of how I do it. Now, yeah, so cool. So now this has a base on it. So I'm gonna just do one other step here a minute. For now, we're just gonna fill in the floor here. Mostly, and then I actually, for what it's worth, I've been texturing the bottoms of these uh, creations too. Um, I don't know why, I just feel like I'm obligated to do that. Okay, come on, stretch. Ah, I, I always have such a hard time trying to hold these two keys at once. All right, so we're all textured there. And the bottoms on all these creations, I've basically just been picking the, the standard black and this texture that I currently have selected and just kind of filling the whole areas in. I'm going to try. I never do this because it scares the crap out of me. But um, I'm going to try a larger brush in this case. See how that works. Certainly could save a lot of time, providing it doesn't, you know, most of the time that doesn't work out unless I'm filling a mass area like that. So that's what I mean by texturing the bottom of it. It's not like it takes time or much time or anything, but you know, hey, why not? So now, uh, uh, walking in here, well, sort of this big block roll going down the middle that doesn't need to be here anymore. It should have enough room. I gotta figure out where that elevator, yeah, this elevator shaft will be going up in here. So it's got enough room for a base floor. And that's all I really wanted on this. It'll make it one block taller, but it doesn't look out of place too much. And it's got a new base to it. So on this one here, um, it's, it's kind of rough because it's using all combat steel right now. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a little something to this too while I'm um, moving along here. And it's just, like I said, something that I've been learning myself to come up with a texture color scheme. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna replace a row, and I don't need to replace all the rows, just a row. So let's, let's replace this middle row here, I think. So I'm going to go through and pick away at all these uh, steel blocks here. And then I'm going to replace them with concrete. Just gives me an idea too. But I'm, I'm going to replace it with concrete, but I'm going to do a little twist to it. I'm going to uh, just see what it looks like if it was brought out another, like a little bit here. What you see, I got going on here. So now it's got a little lip there. So what I'll do 
for instance. Um, now we're dealing with two different materials. So on this material here, I will uh, texture it to the alternative one that can only be used in concrete. So what I've been doing is going to this regular blue color or purple color here and then using this particular texture, which is that. Now I found that this looks better, especially from a distance than just smooth metal. It's not as glary and it seems to come up with a little better look. And like I said, it's a mistake I made on the, uh, the other POI, the Bruder POI, where I also made out of steel and then realized I couldn't make it look like the Ari very well. Do that there. Um, now these uh, combat steel can also do the standard flooring, so I'm going to just do that and not switch out those materials there. But we'll hit this row with that, and the row above it with that. For now, okay. Some of this. Uh, yeah, I see what's going on there. And then I'm going to do the same other thing. I'm going to go with this gray color and some of this tiling here and hit that on the border between the two. here some random thing there and anything that we can do to dress this up how about oops maybe add an event there and I don't know, over here Basically, that's kind of how I've been uh, texturing a lot of this stuff um, on the basic walls, trying to give them some texture and detail when a lot of times, especially with like all these angled shapes and stuff, there's just no real good texture solutions. So I've been doing a stripe pattern of alternate or going between these two textures kind of up the wall. And you can see that done even on the original Ari. Um, kind of like where every other row is that, and the other row is this purple in the middle. Um, but when you look at it as a whole, it kind of just looks like it's a particular weird material that the, the base is made out of and kind of blends right. Um, like I said, I screwed that up on here because I built this whole structure out of concrete and I didn't get that same look. I, the rest of the cosmetics are about right, but, the, but I didn't get that that aspect of it right on that one. So that's kind of what I, uh, yeah, the method I've been doing. But this this is looking like it's really cool. It looks like it's going to be a pretty big base too. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing this one um, come together. Um, the architecture is already looking sweet on it. it. Really is all these uh, exotic lines and things like that meshed into the the mix. Well, this is just kind of a tip if you did want to build Creel stuff. It's pretty quick and easy to texture doing this row method. Now, in other areas, texturing, um, let's, let's do one more texture example here. I'm going to remove these things because they're just going to get in the way for now. Let's say I wanted to texture this little chunk right over here. Let me get symmetry on again on this one. And this one's got a little bit different stuff going on. So... Um, another thing, these, uh, I use a lot of this kind of stuff in places just to, you know, add in some different looks. Um, and I typically with Creel have always been texturing those with this here because it works with concrete and it works with metal. So I'll put those on these, these flat edges like that, usually in the black that you see here, like that. And then on the insides, um, actually, 
I used to just keep them plain like this carpet texture that I currently have but now I've been actually switching that over to this texture as well and it's so dark that it's hard to tell the color difference which is great um, so I'll texture that on the inside that way let's see let's take a look at our rows here right now so this is just kind of different than the rest of the base but you can see that this row over here has this color and that texture there and if I go up another row this should be the next row that has that particular thing going on so let's paint you with that for now and then I'll do the row up above it the same way and the row up above that the same way and yeah, using this tool is saving an awful lot of time. Before, I would go through it, I would texture it, then I'd have to go over it again and color it. And now, since I already know what color it's going to be, it's just making it a whole lot easier and quicker to do this, for sure. Okay, let's do one more top row up here. Side. Let's get some more of this tile thing going on. Now there are some uh, metal textures that I definitely like too. Um, and I will, and basically I am not using those as much. So what I've been doing is just replacing blocks now and then when I'm uh, doing this kind of thing. So, oops. So here and there, I'm like, oh, that would be a great place for a texture light or this other kind of vent or something. So I'll then I'll swap that block out with a, like, in this case, this is a hardened concrete. Or, yeah, the, the best concrete. So I'm using that, and then I'm using combat steel for, for the steel box. Okay, so let's get the center done. Now I might change the texture on the middles there to something more to look at just run that all the way to the wall for now there. in fact we'll leave those empty for now I do try to line these things up but you're gonna run into places that it's just impossible to line them up so I don't put a lot of uh, stuff into it Got that. Now on the insides here, let's do something different. Let's go back to this and maybe add in something like that. Give it a little bit more color contrast, I guess. Oh, I forgot to do this row. same thing on here. I'm going to change this up a little bit and we're going to go with black and throw on a couple of these I think just to give it some variety. And top and bottom in the center there. Yes, it doesn't have that. Okay. And then I guess this all right so what else could be done here um, now on the texture light part kind of trying to think of a place that could get some kind of texture light or alternative. 
Like this particular one, I don't know if I like that texture too much. I've been using it here and there, but I'm going to swap that block out. I'm just going to pop in a steel block. And then I'll switch the texture over to that. And maybe one of those. Getting a little bit too much of those. How about, how about these change over here to something else? Sure, what? That's too much. Ah, too much blue. Tell you what, we're gonna we're gonna get rid of the blue, and I'm gonna put in some vents here. Yeah, vents. And there we go. Now, other things to dress up uh, Creel stuff. Um, obviously, you can use uh, some of this uh, this kind of thing. What I've been doing on a lot of Creel things, I've been using some of these, one, these occasionally, antennas, um, some of these round things. I haven't been doing some of them, like the pipes. I've been using this as well. But if it looks a little too human, I'm trying to avoid it. But I mean, it's kind of impossible to avoid all of it. But here, what I'm thinking about doing is adding in some truss blocks. I mean, they're uh, they're pretty much decorative. Oops. And let's see what can we do here. I definitely like the curves and the thin ones. So let's see, we added in a couple of these, and then one of these in the middle. Okay, it really does about nothing. Well, you know what? We're going to do a second one because uh, i got to drop the floor on this thing anyway, so it's going to go down two more blocks below where you see it now. I'm going to put in two of these just to have something here. Now, in coloring out these, what I do is I tell it to color the whole block, and then I've been coloring that with, of all things, I think just the standard gray. No, I'm sorry. This one here. Um, so this this uh, gray over here. And yeah, I do the whole block because you can color these things on individual sides. For instance, if I took this off and painted like that surface pink, then that surface is pink. But it's a real chore to try to target all these different areas of it to color it all the same color. So that's why I'm doing what I'm doing here. There, so now it's got some some grunge there and a little bit more detail and stuff to look at. I did the same thing all out on this tower here too. Just like randomly, I just added in a couple of these things over there and a couple of like little trim things over here. But when you look at this stuff from a distance, it's that fine detail stuff and it sticks out. Like you see, you're looking at this as a whole and then you see all this little protruding stuff coming off from the sides. Um, just gives it more detail. Even on the Krill Ari here, I just randomly put in some of these things, like over here, and this wacky formation over here that I don't even know what it is. But it's just stuff like that. I think that just you just got more and more to look at all the time when you're when you're building these things up. Oh, and I forget. You know what I forgot to put in? I, I blew away those uh, these decorative things here. And I didn't put them back. And these, all this decorative stuff, I color in this uh, this tone as well. There. So now another chunk of the base is uh, colored and textured. Um, last but not least, uh, when I'm doing this stuff too, after I you know get through these phases of, of texturing it, replacing some blocks with uh, some texture lights occasionally, and adding some of this uh, deco trim stuff, uh, then I will go through and occasionally add in some decals. And there's very little decals I'll use with the creel, um, but I do use the, the dashes. Not a lot to pick from really. So let's uh, let's just put some random white dashes there yeah there we go 
And uh, that's about it, really. Um, that's kind of how the method is done. And with these big, big bulk areas, kind of like what you see done over here, is an option. But of course, the creel is very much up, up to uh, whatever, however you want to do it. I'm just, um, just trying to provide like a base, like general color blending and texture methods. So that's kind of what this is all about. So again, if you do want to build creel structures, that, that is very cool. Um, and uh, POIs basically need to have an uh, alien block installed and then alien parts. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to get into another video more on the POI aspect of it. Um, right now these are just kind of um, building structures um, and I'm not even, uh, I'm even trying to get out of doing the, the POI stuff because it can take a lot of time. Uh, so much testing and you, you almost need like a test scenario so you can spawn in these things, make sure they spawn right on the ground, run through them, see how it all works out, make some changes, put it back in the scenario, do it again. Um, and it, it can be very time consuming. It took me a long time to try to get this thing working in game. Actually, probably two thirds the amount of time it took to build the structure is what it actually, well, about a third of the time it took to build the, the structure is what it actually took to try to get it in the game and test it. And it's still not per perfect. I know there's a vulnerability if you were to start shooting heavily at this turret here and start damaging the building. Or no, I think you'd have to hit the building like right here. You can kill the core. I think from outside if a targeted blow is right there. And that's something I'm gonna try to avoid on uh, newer newer structures as well. Maybe I'll try to um, swap out some blocks on this thing too to try to get it a little bit more in uniform with the rest of the, the Creel stuff. But anyway, that's all I've got for today for today to show you. Um, been uh, yeah, a lot of building lately and uh, stuff's coming along pretty good. I haven't done more on the uh, Creel starter ship. Um, that I kind of want to try to finish up the hangar and start moving on to the rest of it. Um, but I'm thinking that this will be released next weekend, so I got a little bit of leeway time. Um, this is going out this weekend, next weekend. Um, and these POIs aren't, I don't know if I'm releasing them to the general public or not i might or I might at least put them on uh, friends only for downloads but yeah there's gonna be a whole lot of pois and that's cool because you can be able to make a whole like creel city which is kind of the goal all their plans on pois i'd like to build for the creel is a uh asteroid poi um and that can be done now which is pretty cool i'll, I'll have to show how that's done after I learned a little bit more and uh, a drone base and I would like to do some kind of floating base and then also a dungeon base now a dungeon base would be like some of the the bases you see in the game now where you might have some area above ground and then it goes below ground um, now all these are surface dwelling POIs so they they don't go below ground but uh, I did want to get into that aspect of things as well it's just a lot of a lot of possibilities, and trust me, I'd really like to do a Creel space station at some point too. Um, but yeah, one thing at a time. Well, kind of <laughs> like I'm working on three or four things at a time. But yeah, um, they're all getting done. They're all getting done. It's uh, it's it's working out. Anyway, y'all have yourself a, a good day. Stay safe as normal, um, and uh, we'll uh, see you on the next video. See you later.